The oil test results are in for the XR600R after the six hour endurance race. And in this video, I'll run through just a little bit of the kind of insight a test like this can provide. It's important to note that oil analysis has a limited usefulness, but it does have some usefulness. One of the things I've noted to be true is that when something has worn badly, there will be something obviously elevated in the oil analysis, and the inverse has also proven true. This is one of several patterns I've noted after doing a lot of these tests, which could be potentially useful for someone who wanted to keep a bike in tip-top shape. The aforementioned pattern happens to be highly intuitive, uh, to the point of seeming obvious, but it's the one I'll focus on in this video because I don't have any other samples from this unique bike, and a lot of the other things that I find interesting can only be observed as trends over the course of multiple oil samples from the same bike. First of all, in case you had not watched my previous videos about this bike, here's the situation. I raced the bike in a six hour endurance race. The bike started puffing a crap ton of blue smoke during that race. By the end of the race, the oil level was low, well off the dipstick. After the race, I discovered a fat leak in the air boot past the air filter. Obviously, given these observations, significant wear has occurred in this engine since it was seemingly very fresh during the test ride before the race. I decided to see what this level of wear shows up as in an oil analysis for this particular bike. Here are the results. The silicon result here at 61 parts per million is the highest silicon concentration I've seen from my personal oil samples. Silicon content is commonly thought to be an indicator of dirt contamination in the engine, be it through lack of intake filtration, poorly designed breathers, or other means, and I've noted that it is a good indicator of such contamination. However, oil test results will always come back showing some amount of silicon in the oil. In fact, brand new out of the bottle, this oil contains seven parts per million. Universally across all the motorcycle oil samples I've sent in, 15 parts per million is typical. And if there definitely has been some sort of dirt contamination, it will show up as 30 parts per million or more. And that would be considered extremely bad. This result at 61 is more than extremely bad. The Grande air leak past the air filter didn't do this bike any favors, and I'm suspicious of the crankcase breather as well. This thing clearly devoured an unhealthy portion of dirt. The aluminum result here at 86 parts per million is actually pretty low for results that I've had on shared sump bikes. I've noticed this number goes through the roof when I've been abusing the shit out of a clutch, and it easily gets above 100 parts per million in that case. I hardly have to use the clutch on the 600, so this result makes sense. Chromium showing at a concentration of 14 parts per million would typically have me raising an eyebrow on most bikes, but not on this bike in this situation, and here's why. I've seen chromium concentration become elevated with a case of heavy camshaft and rocker wear before. The hard alloy used for camshafts and the hardened face of rocker arms shows up as elevated chromium in the oil results. Typical results come back with this number being very low. Zero, one, sometimes two. In one case where a camshaft and rocker wear surface wore together by three thousandths of an inch, chromium shot up to 34 parts per million. That was an engine with two cam lobes, two rocker arms, and the cam riding in ball bearings. This old 600 has four cam lobes, four rocker arms, with each one contacting a sub rocker and a center cam journal without a ball bearing. So there's gonna be some wear metal coming off that crap. As long as the clearances don't make a giant leap in the next few rides, which they didn't do this time, I don't think there's a need to start shopping for a valve train. High iron concentration is not surprising given the blue smoke from an obviously chewed up cylinder. The oil properties section in this analysis is suggesting that the oil itself didn't take much of a beating over the six hours. In higher RPM applications, this same oil has a way more dramatic shift in viscosity after a run like that. The only thing really notable here is that the insolubles level was found to be 0.3%, which is higher than any other result I've personally had, but I haven't recognized any trends associated with that number, so I don't really have any remarks on that. So without being able to see trends for this bike, there's not a whole lot more I can accurately go into for this oil analysis here. But take from that what you will, and let me know if I should continue to share oil analysis results in the future, and if I should get more in depth with it and look at trends and stuff like that.